The news is filled with images of disasters, tsunamis, earthquakes and floods. But after the cameras leave, what happens to the many millions of people forced to leave their homes as a result of these natural disasters? My name is Dr David Cantor and I'm the director of the Refugee Law Initiative at the University of London. Our distance learning MA in Refugee Protection and Forced Migration Studies gives students a great opportunity to get to grips with key contemporary challenges in international refugee law. One such contemporary challenge relates to the far-reaching global implications of the forced migration of people caused not by persecution and war, but by environmental events, such as natural disasters. Sometimes these events occur suddenly, as with the devastating earthquake that destroyed the capital of Haiti in 2010. Elsewhere, these processes develop slowly over time, as with the rising sea levels encroaching on parts of coastal Bangladesh. Crucially, the intensity and frequency of both kinds of disaster appears to be increasing as a result of climate change. Yet in contrast to traditional refugee movements, we are only just getting to grips with the fact that disasters can provoke forced migration on a substantial scale. The figures are astonishing. It is estimated that between 2008 and 2013, 166 million people were forced to leave their homes as a result of the destruction caused by natural disasters. To put these figures in context, the number displaced by war and persecution during the same period was about one-fifth of that total, or around 30 million people. Whereas refugees fleeing persecution benefit from the existence of long-standing international institutions and legal guarantees, the protection of persons displaced by environmental events generates more questions than answers. Are their needs similar or different to those of traditional refugees? What form of humanitarian protection do they require? What long-term measures need to be taken in order to mitigate the risks of disasters and the effects that they generate, especially in the face of climate change? And do governments have the political will to take the necessary steps? Governments and humanitarian organisations, as well as academics and students, are currently grappling with these conceptual and practical challenges. Indeed, my recent research for the Nansen Initiative is presently being studied by governments in both North and Central America and in South America with a view to creating the first regional frameworks for the protection of persons displaced across a border by natural disasters. If these sorts of contemporary challenges capture your imagination and you'd like to play a future role in finding solutions, then why not consider the MA in Refugee Protection and Forced Migration Studies offered through the University of London International Programmes.